All right, so today we're heading south, virtually speaking, of course. We're taking a deep dive into how Tuskegee University is handling this whole online learning integrity thing. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting case studies, right? You've got this institution steeped in history and tradition, now navigating the wild west of online education. How do you ensure academic rigor when your classroom is virtual? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And to their credit, Tuskegee doesn't shy away from it. In fact, they address it right off the bat in their guidelines. Oh, you mean that whole part about the student who registers is the same student who participates? and receives credit. Exactly. It seems pretty straightforward at first glance, but there's a lot more to it when you think about it. Absolutely. In a traditional classroom setting, you know, the professor can look around and see who's taking the exam. But in the online world, Ugh. well, that's a whole other ball game. Right. Like, how can you be absolutely sure that the person typing away on the other end of that screen is actually who they say they are? That's the challenge Tuskegee is wrestling with, and it seems like they're using technology to address it. I mean, this document outlines a pretty intricate system. It really does. I was blown away by how they're using both their Canvas learning platform and their student database. What's it called? Colleague, I think. Or it's a tiger I, web. That's it, tiger web. Anyway, they're using those systems not just to verify identities, but to actually track student activity as well. Yeah, and it's more than just, oh, did they log in? It's about connecting the dots. Right. right? You've got login data, course discussions, assignment submissions, all of it painting a picture of student engagement. It's almost like a digital fingerprint. That's a great way to put it. But, you know, this whole thing made me think about the privacy implications. Like, where's the line when it comes to tracking student data? You're right. It's a valid concern. And actually, Tuskegee does address it. They specifically mention FERPA in their guidelines. FERPA. Remind me what that is again. Oh, right. It stands for the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Basically, it's a federal law that protects the privacy of student educational records. Okay, that's ringing a bell now. By mentioning FERPA, are they saying they won't use this data for anything other than preventing cheating? Well, I'd like to think so. It seems like they're trying to strike that delicate balance between maintaining academic integrity and respecting student privacy. It's a tough one, for sure. For sure. And speaking of tough, we can't forget about proctoring. I mean, talk about a loaded term in the world of online learning. No kidding. This document actually dives into the two main approaches Tuskegee uses, live proctoring and on-demand proctoring. Oh, man, live proctoring. Just hearing those words takes me back to my college days. I swear I could practically feel someone looking over my shoulder during every exam. I hear you. But on-demand proctoring, that's a different beast altogether. It's more like you take your exam and then later software analyzes the recording for any suspicious behavior. Interesting. It seems like each method, live versus on demand, comes with its own set of pros and cons. And not just logistically speaking, but, you know, psychologically for the student as well. I mean, I can't imagine the pressure of knowing your every move is being recorded and analyzed. That's a really good point. I wonder if there's been any research into how these different proctoring methods affect student anxiety or performance. Hmm, that's something to look into for sure. But before we get too sidetracked, there's one more thing I wanted to touch on from this document, and that's the quote they end with. Oh, you mean the one from Psalms. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Yes, it really struck me. I mean, it seems like they're saying that even with all this technology, all these systems in place, the real foundation of academic integrity has to be something more. It's about creating a culture of honesty, of trust. And that's something that goes beyond just catching cheaters. It's about fostering an environment where students feel intrinsically motivated to learn and to uphold academic standards. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Which I think leads us to a pretty important question for our listeners to ponder. The document does a great job of outlining how Tuskegee is verifying student identity and ensuring academic integrity in online courses, but it doesn't delve too deeply into the why. Right. Like, what are the underlying values and goals driving these policies? Exactly. And what are the implications of this intense focus on academic rigor, especially in the online environment? Does it ultimately create a more honest and trustworthy learning environment? Or does it risk fostering a culture of fear and suspicion? Definitely something to think about.